Pillar to post, ensuring confident homeownership. Call a day to book your home inspection. I'm Hunter Wade at the Apple's Lodge Podcast. I'm here with my guest. I'm Aiden Rolfs with the Vancouver Volcanoes. So, Aiden, I guess just, you know, over there, tell us about what made you want to uh, sign up for the TBL Combine and, you know, participate. Uh, well, honestly, I was just, just working out at my school gym. Uh, I go to UW, so I was going to the Intramural Center just working out and I met a friend there who, who told me like told me about the TBL like we just started talking and uh, he let me know he was going out to this trial in Indianapolis so I would kind of just been working to kind of get my mind right and it just like felt good to get in the gym and then I just heard about this opportunity so I kind of just decided I might as well put an angle at the at the end of it and and go try out and see what happens were you I guess surprised of like uh, I guess maybe how well you played at the TBL. Yeah, I wasn't really too sure what to expect going down there. I wasn't sure if it was going to be a lot of guys that were established pros or guys like me who were who were young and kind of looking for for an entry point into like any sort of professional league if you didn't have like a super strong resume from before. So I, I was a little surprised because I, I as soon as I got out there, I felt felt pretty comfortable and I felt like. You know, I belonged out there, but it was, um, yeah, just I wasn't really sure, too sure what to expect. Did you think you could really shoot at your height? Do you think that was the biggest thing that they saw and what they really liked? Um, honestly, I'm not too sure because I felt like I didn't shoot that well at the combine, but I feel like they might have looked at some of my high school and seen that, like, in high school, all I did was shoot. But from the combine, I felt like I kind of stood out more so from just – playing basketball versus like doing an individual tryout, like showing mm. that I knew how to play basketball and move the ball and be in the right spot on defense and stuff like that, like versus just shooting. The, you know, what I guess kind of so far, like so, since you got, uh, what's kind of been your schedule like since you got drafted? Um, So we've only had a couple practices, but it's just going to be a practice a week for the most part. Um, we're going to get a scrimmage in and then games on weekends. So I just, I guess Wednesday I have to commute up whether by train or getting a ride um, just to go to practice from Seattle to Vancouver, Washington. And then the rest of the week, I'm just in school like Monday through Friday, other than Wednesday. And then weekends we'll, we'll get, start getting into games and stuff like that. How nice is it that the uh, team in Vancouver drafted you? Very convenient, yeah. Going into the draft, I was like, you know, still being in school for at least like a month, having classes, I was gonna kind of have to go completely remote with it. But with with uh, getting picked to the Vancouver team, it was just really convenient to where I only have to leave the leave town for once a week or one day a week. So it really worked out. So what's going on? Where are you studying right now? I'm doing a mechanical engineering, and I'm about to finish up my classes at the end of or mid March, and then I just got a project that I'm gonna be doing through the season. But other than that, I'll just be hooping. So you know, right now with you know, you kind of got to meet your your team at Vancouver. You haven't got to spend a, a lot of time with them, but you gotta you gotta go up there. What did you like about you know what you've seen so far? Yeah, everyone's you know, it seems like a lot of guys are new too. There's only really a few returners, so. I feel like it's a good opportunity to get kind of fit myself in with um, a lot of guys who aren't really used to it, but everyone's got good energy. Everyone's, you know, not all in it for themselves. Like, you know, we got a, like a good team going. So really excited about getting to know these guys better and, and playing basketball with them. When you went to the, uh, we kind of mentioned that you weren't kind of sure what to expect of the combine. Did you expect to play I guess as good as you did at the combine, because like as you said, like your experience level compared to a lot of people there is lower. So were you, especially by the second day, so were you shocked how well you were able to keep up with people at a lot of what you played professionally? Uh I mean my expectation my mentality going in was I was gonna play good and get picked up, but as yeah. in terms to like Yeah, I mean in my mind I was gonna I was gonna play as good as I played or or better. Like I was, you know, in my mind I was like okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to play good. Like I, like I know what I can do, even if I haven't like done it before, like against other like competition, like college guys. But yeah, I'd say like I expected to do good, but I didn't have like a, anything substantial to back it up on other than just, you know, believing in myself and thinking I can play. Have you, uh, 
have you guys even really had the chance to see, or are you the, where are you in terms of the height on your team? Are you the tallest, the second tallest, the what? I think I'm second tallest, but we got a we got a lot of good sized bigs that are. But there's a Marky Adams, kind of the, he's six ten and a bit bulkier. But yeah, he's I think he's taller than me. And then other than that, I think I'm about the tallest. But there's there's a few other bigs my height too. How tall are you? I'm six nine. Okay, so okay, so I'm six eight. So yeah, I about to say you look. Okay. I didn't like get a chance to come up to speak to you like when I was at the combine, but you looked a little taller than me. So it's like yeah, what, mm-hmm, what's yes. Like, with a lot better jumper. <laughs> the, the no, so at the you know at the TBL the uh, uh or at the combine you know there's a lot of stuff and I, I just noticed this where a lot of people were going in for dunks you were taking threes during like <laughs> layup lines was that strategic or is it just like you can't compete with the dunks so I'm just gonna shoot yeah it's just like you know a six nine guy throwing down some dunks isn't really that crazy you know yeah. it's like it's been seen before and I, I don't really have like i don't really practice like a package or anything like that but on the on the second day i was feeling a little more you know into it so i was like okay i'll just you know throw a few dunks in there but you know the first day for sure just getting off the plane and everything i want to make sure like okay when these games start i want to be like at least shooting good or at least get up a as many shots as I could up before. So, yeah, that's kind of like before I play, I like to just shoot a lot. So, I... you, the what, you know, the, and that was, you know, you just got off the plane. And what is that from Seattle to or, uh, Indianapolis? How long was that? Uh, that's about four hours, four and or then, five hours. And then you're, you're six nines. So we're going to factor that in. And then, mm-hmm. and then how quickly did you, how quickly did you have to start playing? Uh, it was actually the night before, so I, I okay. flew in and then did like the interview process, like that night. So I went like straight from the airport to like the interview where you like met all the teams and kind of got to talk to them. Um, so I wanted to do that for sure. Um, and then yeah, the next morning we started playing. So I got a I got a night's sleep there in yeah. Indianapolis. Yeah, that that helps. The uh, the you know the first day was. I would the second day was better competition than the first day. You stuck around both days. Was it do you think it was worth it in the uh stick around for both days? Uh, I do think so just cuz I'd already spent a good amount to get down there and stay a hotel um and I'd be staying there that night anyway. Um so it really it was just the the tryout cost that added anything and you know like when you're down there you're not trying out for just one team like every team gets to see you so you never know how, you know, that team seeing you this year could like progress down the line. And so I just figured might as well just maximize the opportunities I got to be play in front of every single team in person while while I'm there. So I definitely think it was it was worth it to just be seen by everyone while everyone's in one place. Yes, yeah, so this is a kind of, a, I guess, a no brainer question. But, you know, you mentioned that you're just running intramurals pretty much before in rec runs. What's it what's the difference like when you didn't add a coach? Or, you know, add people with, you know, you know, add a system and a coach. What is it, what's it like? Like, do you have to like, and I, and you obviously been coached before, but what's it like to going from doing your own thing and air barrels or rec to like, oh yeah, we're running things professionally now. Yeah, I, I like it a lot more. It's a lot more strategic. It's a lot more of like a, a mental game versus just going out and playing and, and kind of working on what you worked on I mean you can like practice seeing the core and playing D like and pick up but it's not really full speed I'd say so like it's like the biggest difference for me is just playing with really good players on my team you know I, I, I like I really enjoy that a lot you know that opens up a lot more to like you know when I drive into an open spot like this guy's gonna know when to cut this guy's gonna know where to space out so it's like kind of it's more predictable um how to make plays versus like kind of just guessing where everyone's going to be or like seeing where everyone's going to be in the moment so like um yeah just more organized structured more of like a, a mental game versus just working on my skills i guess pillar to post ensuring confident homeownership call a day to book your home inspection is there anyone that you tried to you know i'm sure you watched basketball as a kid was there any anyone you tried to i guess model your game after Mm. I mean, my favorite player was always Braun, but I I never really played like him. Like, yeah, you know, I never I never really lowered my shoulder into him. But yeah, I mean, KD is KD is one I I really like. Like 
he's a guy I definitely want to be like, like for sure. The have you ever got the Chet Holmgren comparison yet? Yeah, I've I've heard that you know when playing pickup and stuff, people will throw random names out there. Chet, oh. Wemby, you know those. Oh, and and the state, and, and you live in the state too. You live mm-hmm. in Gonzaga State, so like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's because I get it, and I live in the Midwest, and I don't look at I look less like Chet than you do, and by that I'm just not <laughs> as tall. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely I've definitely heard that one before. The I was gonna say Chet. I'm sure you've heard Przingis at one point, and then would be it, it, any any taller guy that can shoot. You kind of hear <laughs> pretty much, yeah. The it's a very lazy comparison, but they do it. The mm-hmm, it's you know, easy. What's your, what's your like? I guess goal for obviously you want to be back multiple years, you know, if you enjoy it. But what's your goal for the season? Is it just playing your absolute best? Is there like, do you want to be a starter? To, you know, would you like to be a starter in a full year? What's like your, I guess, goal? Uh, I'd say my goal for just this year. I mean, I want to win, win the championship with this team. I think we got a really good team. Um, I just need to get better playing professional, like learn from these guys that kind of know what they're doing with how many workouts a week, you know, strengthening their legs without over tiring them so they can perform just kind of learning like what these guys do, like, and yeah, I mean, I, I want some to play some minutes and and like get game action and see what it's like playing pro and kind of make sure I fit into the rotation. Like, yeah, I'd say that the goal in terms of that is um, earning like a consistent fit in a rotation. I don't necessarily need to start. Like, we got some pretty good guys like at my position that I played overseas and and stuff like that. So I'm just like pick up what I can from them. Um, get a consistent consistent minutes uh whatever that looks like i know it's a long game you know and i'm not sure how the rotations exactly work you know with the 48 minutes yeah. and how good it you know shape everyone is to play all those minutes but yeah i just want to learn as much as i can and get a get a spot the you know is there any pressure being the first the first round pick um uh, not too much you know everyone's just playing basketball it's the same opportunity for everyone so yeah i mean i was gonna say you just went to the combine and everyone else was brought in because how i don't know if you do this how was everyone else brought in like is it just like people they've seen before how how do they kind of fill out the rest of the roster i'm not sure yeah i, I kind of the gist i'm getting from it is kind of everyone sees their team i think just connections through through the coaches and owners like and people who live in the area just reach out, send them tape and stuff like that. But yeah, they kind of fill out the most of what they want their roster to be before the training camp, and then just go to the draft and see if there's anything they want to add on, or they can just you know trade their pick away, or they can um, add on to add someone they think fits into what they already have built. But yeah, I'm not too sure. Is there anything that you're, I guess, consciously trying to work on right now in terms of to get better? Uh, is it like just, you know, playing with playing with a team? What it what what would that be? What would be the, uh, you know, what you're trying to get better at? Yeah, I'd say during the season, definitely just getting familiar to the mental side of the game, like seeing where everyone is on the floor, just kind of picking that apart and making like the right decisions, and then definitely am working on like throughout the season I'm gonna be working on just improving my athleticism I want to be like more explosive and stuff like that and just get more shots up consistently kind of make sure I'm I'm at the best I can be in terms of that and then kind of just go from there on working with um skill stuff but yeah I kind of want to make sure for the season I'm that my legs are in good shape for these games and like I feel as explosive as I can and that you know I'm knocking down shots so those are like my two temporary priorities. You know, you're, you know, the, the game's good. Uh, you know, the TBL game's going to be more physical, I guess, than record or mural ball. So is there like an adjustment to get used to that from like, in terms of being able to get your shot off and kind of drive where you want to and like stuff like that? Yeah, definitely. I got to, you know, keep my base solid. Um, you know, I like, I like using, even though I'm not super big, I like using my body to like initiate contact for like, yeah rebounds and drives and stuff but yeah it's gonna be different with a bigger body in front of me but it's it's mostly just like 
leverage and stuff it doesn't always matter necessarily how strong you are it's kind of just where you put your body and, and like kind of the timing of when you bump into them so yeah just kind of working on that and making sure I don't get knocked off balance that I'm like anticipating contact pretty much even if the other guy's stronger than me at the moment yeah it's better to it's better to make contact with someone to get someone make contact with you <laughs> yeah exactly and it doesn't really matter if who's stronger it's who initiates the contact so it's most of the time it's pretty much whoever knocks the other one off balance. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The so what you know with that being I guess said is there stuff like are you trying to get stronger you know just like you know because like you got the the slimmer frame but then well, some people like and the TBL has a lot of like wing types that are like are very thick wings. The is there like a you know effort to get uh, you know change the body type a little bit or at least I don't know like you know I guess subtract some of those maybe strength differences. Yeah, definitely. I definitely want to, you know, with it being so close to the season and it kind of coming up quick on me, like during the season, I'm going to focus on my legs more for sure. Um, just because I, I feel like if anything, you know, if my upper body is the same and my legs are stronger, you know, my speed's going to be better. I'm not going to, you know, I'm still going to be have my my shot like I'm used to. Um, but that's definitely like a concern, like for the off season, I'd say is I want to like change my build going into it. Um, I just feel like during the season, there's other things I can work on, like, you know, being, being more explosive and yeah, my legs mainly, uh, my legs and hips, but yeah, like in the future, you know, once I actually have like a whole or like a little bit of a time in an off season and I, you know, I've been eating lots. So yeah, just putting on upper body weight. I want to do that as well. Is that a, is that something or, oh no, no, no. So I had a question. I lost it. I just found it again. I'm just curious because when's the first year you, or when's like the first time you dunked? First time I dunked was probably sophomore going into junior year. So I was kind of late into that. I was never very like naturally athletic, like in getting up. It's hard just to go for it too. It's, yeah. It's like, I, like the first time you don't think you can do it, even if you're like tall, tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, no, it's kind of. Then once you do it, you're just like, oh, that's it. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and then, but the first time you're like, well, I don't know how I'm gonna gra if I'm gonna grab the rim. I don't know how I'm gonna do some of this stuff. And then once you do yeah, it, it's I, like, oh. yeah, I definitely got into a little bit of like a a mental block where it's like, okay, even if I can dunk, you know, I'm already this tall doing this dunk. Like nobody really cares. I'll just kind of stay away from dunking, even though I can like barely dunk, you know. So I just never really repped it out um you know dunking a lot even when i could so it was like it didn't it didn't get stronger necessarily yeah. or as much as it like could have and you're you're already way above the square when you jump and it's i'm just gonna lay this in for some reason and then everyone's mm -hmm. disappointed <laughs> yeah exactly Look, it's, you know, it's, you good. Like to see it's good it's good to see someone else knows the knows the i'm already here but i was gonna lay this in pain <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the but no, I mean, yeah, when you don't get used to it, and when you it's like, it's like, well, it's not, it's not impressive when you're so tall and you don't. It's like, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, who cares? It's, yeah. it's like the only thing that's cool is when you get like a standing dunk because like they left you open, and it's just like that's easy to do, but that's just because it, mm -hmm. it's just easier to do that at that point, <laughs> yeah, for sure. The but yeah, I mean, what you know, you're shooting at your heights really, I guess, unnatural for like an, an average, I don't want to say an average, you know, you didn't, you didn't play college at you know you i or you know washington obviously so like some of the other shoot at your height's not like a normal occurrence that happens very often you know there's a lot of things there's a lot of things that work against tall people in shooting like the limbs and all like the arms and all that so like how do you i guess how did you get so good at shooting um that's just always what i've enjoyed doing like that's that was my favorite aspect of the game you know i'm kind of developing more into trying to be more like work on everything balanced but you know when i went to the gym like that's the first thing i do i just always shoot um yeah just always i felt good with the with the shooting um kind of with your what you're going off of with the limbs i mean my limbs aren't they're about the same as my height like my wingspan is about the same as my height so it's not like my leg my arms are just um drooping down so i feel like that kind of helps with um keeping the form good and keeping like the release tight but yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, I've always been like a, 
math and physics guy for like my school stuff. So I guess just that kind of just naturally came. I like to shoot the ball and see it go in. But well, well, the limbs and that limb thing does help. That also helps keep the handle tighter because mm-hmm. if, you have, if you have like super long arms, like I got, I got a short wingspan too. So it makes it easier to keep that, hold the ball. The, but yeah, like the, I guess yeah, the wingspan. And I, I, I mean, if your hands aren't massive too, it doesn't kind of like it doesn't really restrict you from shooting uh, at all. The, when did you come up with your jumper? Like in terms of like what you do now, like because like I'm sure you are well aware what your jumper is in terms of uh, like how, when, what what time do you think your jumper kind of became finalized? I'd honestly say I never really tweaked much with my jumper. Um, I can, I was honestly kind of thinking about that earlier. Like I might have to, you know, change certain things when like different looks come at, like, you know, like when I have to change my shooting pocket or something like that. But honestly, it's all, it's all kind of just developed over time naturally. Like, you know, if I pick up on something, I'll probably like, you know, okay, I need to flick my wrist a little bit more. I got to shoot it up a little more, you know, little things like that. But my shot's always been the it's always been the same like I've, I've always done the same thing or whatever comes natural so, so with all that i assume your free throw shooting is pretty good it uh it can be you know i've honestly that's something i need to work on being more consistent on like i know i, I can like you know if i'm in front of a free throw line just shooting like 100 shots like you know i'll get in a rhythm and get them down but sometimes when i just like hop on the line after not being there in a while it, it kind of like it isn't as good as it should be. So that's that's definitely something I'm tweaking to to make sure it's good. But yeah, the potential is definitely there to be a good free throw shooter. So you know the is there going into this, are you worried are you worried about maybe some of the speed that the other guys had? Or are you worried about having to protect the rim? What what what's like your I guess a concern of yours, but maybe you don't need to work on, but like what's the sudden you're just like this might be a little bit of a mismatch. So I'm going to try to, I guess, negate it. Yeah, I'd say um, the, the guys are definitely a lot faster. and But, like, athleticism has never been, like, what I use to gain, like, my advantages. Um, yeah. I'd say, like, you know, I just have to get to my spots a little bit quicker. You know, I have to read when, when the guy – because I feel like I can guard pr- wings pretty well, too. Like, I'm not just guarding a, a big man that's not really going to – in the post. So – I guess yeah, adjusting to the skill of the skill level of the wings is probably going to take some time. Making sure I'm not just giving up jump shots while I can also stay in front. Um, so yeah, that first step quickness, I guess I want to work on. But other than that, like uh, in terms of being like a help defender and protecting the paint and stuff like that, like I just need to make my rotations a little quicker. But you know, I'm I'm tr- always trying to see like okay, when the when this dude is about to drive and kind of just beat him to the spot versus you know being more athletic than him like yeah what's the, was that the um you know do, do you prefer to guard the perimeter or do you prefer to guard post i'd say i prefer to guard post because I, I like being a help defender um i feel like my help defense is kind of more of my strong suit and a big you know he i feel like i can he's not really going to get around me and it's, it's more just positioning um, boxing out a little bit, but yeah, it depends if the bigs like really bulky and kind of just really playing down low, po- doing lots of post moves, then, then I'd rather play a wing, but yeah, the, if they're really big, it sometimes doesn't go good when you're skinnier trying to, trying to guard them. Yeah. No, their post moves are, they can, they can work if, if they got like a good post bag, but yeah, or, or just the I'm gonna give you a shoulder, and then you're gonna have to lower your arms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then they just hook over that shoulder, like with the shot, and not not really much you can do. Yeah, so the you know I guess kind of uh, wrapping up here, going into this year, you know, all, with all this stuff, you know, and you have played high school basketball, but then you pre- I mean you pretty much took a break from it, all right, competitively. Mm-hmm. I said intramurals, yeah. and uh, granted, you went to a big school, so intramurals there are very much a real thing <laughs> like there's good competition there when you go to a big school i assume i mean my am, am i right but yeah no it's solid it's yeah we're in the middle of our intramural league right now and it's it's a it's pretty competitive yeah you're on the west coast you went to a pac-12 squad hope there's some talent in intramurals <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah there's a lot of high school starters 
Uh, mm -hmm. So going from that to going to professionals, two guys that older, a little bit older, played, you know, played overseas, played in college, you know, is there not, not necessarily like a desire to like belong, but are you trying to prove that? Yeah, I'm still like, like I, I can hang easy with these guys. Yeah, I could say for the most part, just, just within my team, like, you know, not really too worried about the outside of it, but yeah, I want like my teammates to be like, yeah, this, this guy can play, like we can give him the ball in this space and, and he's going to make the right decision. He's going to do the right thing. Like he's going to find the right guy. Like, you know, I just earning that trust within my team. That's the only thing I'm really concerned about in terms of that. But, you know, everything else will, will come over time, you know. I just don't have, like, the experience right now, but, you know, about to get it, so. Well, I've been Hunter Wade at the Athletes Lounge Podcast, and thanks for doing this. Yep, thank you. Hey, guys, this is Hunter Wade at the Athletes Lounge Podcast. Please like, share, and subscribe where you can. Thanks.